Hi everyone, this is U.S. Immigration Attorney Sharifa Tharp and I am here live to take your immigration questions. So I come on daily to take your questions. That's my goal here, that's my priority, is to get your questions. So if you have U.S. Immigration questions, go ahead, drop them in the questions right now because that's what I'm here to do. So I'm usually here for about half an hour. Sometimes if it's really good, I'll go over the half an hour. Um, so go ahead, always feel welcome while I'm, uh, while I'm talking to start putting your questions in the comments. So before I start, I want to formally introduce myself. I'm US Immigration Attorney Sharifa Tharp, and I help clients to get their green cards, their permanent residence, their status in the United States. You can learn more about me by going to the link in my bio where it will take you to the website where you can read up about me, what I've done, and you can also contact me through that site. So there's the phone number that's there. And there's also a contact form. So we have staff that's um, ready to take your calls up until 11 p.m. So if you want to schedule a consultation with me or if you have an issue, you can call even now and um, you will be able to schedule your consultation tonight. And I know it's convenient because you are you don't have work or it may be after work um, or it just may be a convenient time for you to get it done. But in the meantime, what I want to do now while I'm here is answer your questions Hi there, Nasir. Nasir Mewada, it's nice to see you. Thanks for saying hi. So alive and blessed, I like that one. If you have a B2 visa and you visit the States and you want to get a working visa, how can you? So this is a question I get very often and I'm glad you ask it. No, a B2 visa is definitely not going to qualify you for a work visa. Now, if you want to change to a B2 to another status, you would have to apply for a change of status and you'd have to qualify for that. So you'd have to qualify, for example, through, um, through a family member if you want to go on to get the permanent residence and you know you would get the right to work or you would have to do it through an employer if you want an, an, a type of employment-based visa. So if you're thinking about doing it through an employer, the first thing that you have to do is get um, get an employer, find an employer who's willing to apply for you to get it. And it also depends on your qualifications. Now, because there are so many employment-based visas, so many, um, so many different requirements, with this option, if you really would like to explore it, we'd have to sit down in a consultation because the first thing I'd have to do is figure out what your qualifications are and then match it to a type of visa. But even then, if I can advise you of your options, you would have to find an employer that's willing to apply um, to apply for you to get that visa. So keep those questions coming. These are all, I so far, good questions. Uh, good question. So um, keep those questions coming because that's why I'm here. So I'm here every day and you're welcome alive and blessed. So I'm here every day. Nasir Mewada, can I, can I LPR file for I-131 refugee for their spouse while the I um, the I one thirty is pending, so the spouse would have to be included in your application to be able to um, come along with you. So if the I one thirty is pending, that spouse would have to be included on it to be able to um, get through as well. Now the I one three one. Um, is usually associated with a travel document or advanced parole. It allows you to travel outside of the United States, um, but it's not going to give your spouse status. So um, you would have to, you know, I urge you to get advice if you're looking at an option and you're not exactly sure where to start in regards to getting your wife here as well. Glenworth 74, is it safe to apply for for the ITIN? So yes, it is safe. Uh, this is for individuals who don't have 
social security numbers, which includes undocumented immigrants. Undocumented immigrants do use it to file for their taxes, which they have every right to do. So user Savsky, um, if I got my visiting visa revoked, is it possible that they will grant me uh, the HB2? So it depends, um, user Savsky, one, on why they revoked the visa. So it could be something that it may not be consequential or too consequential. And, but at the same time, it may be. So for example, if they revoked it because they caught you in a lie, that could be considered misrepresentation. And misrepresentation comes with a lifetime bar from getting any kind of visas to come to the United States. If, for example, you overstayed your visiting visa by 10 days, it wouldn't necessarily render you inadmissible. But what would happen though is they, the officer wouldn't like that because if you overstayed your visa, your visitor's visa, when it's time for you to return on the HB2, are you going to? And so um, it could affect it, but it just depends on what the underlying issue is. So keep your questions coming. These are all great questions and that's exactly why I'm here. I am here to answer your questions. You are my priority tonight. So hey, if if you see me here, why not take advantage of that opportunity? Now, I know if you're going through the immigration process or you have been through it or you are thinking about going through it, um, then you have a question. So unless you're under Biden administration, how long does it take for the citizenship interview? So my clients so far, I've seen for my clients, it has been as short as a month and a half to get the interview and um, as long as nine months. So um, it varies, it depends. You know, it may depend on how busy what a USCIS office may be in a particular area. But I've seen a range, the average time that I've seen is six months. Um, Love Doctor 32, Guyanese constantly getting turned down when applying for a visitor's visa. So, you know, it's, uh, I hear that time and time again, not just only with Guyana, but other countries. And it's sometimes it can be difficult because, um, you know, the, the, the requirements of the visitor's visa can make it hard for some individuals to get it. So if some individual, if you don't have, um, if you don't have a job or you don't have many assets or you don't have strong ties to your country like many family members or most of your family members are in the United States and not in your home country that they can be convinced that if you leave the country you won't return and so that's why it's so hard. Um, so Riverdale 5 West I've been turned down thrice for visiting visa they never give a reason that's right. Um, so they usually don't give a reason. They'll give you a, the statute and that statute is basically saying they don't believe that you have strong ties to your home country. And what that means is that you don't have, um, that you're not, they're not convinced that if you get the visa, you will return to your home country because they're not seeing strong ties. Strong ties include, um, includes um, an employment, strong commitments, uh, uh, property, uh, debt, uh, many family members that you can't leave behind in your country. Um, and so if they don't see that, or for some reason they think that you won't return, they, they won't give you that. How can I migrate to the US? So that is a very loaded question um, with many different avenues. So um, you would have to qualify through employment, through an employer, through a family members, like a US citizen parent, a US citizen um, or green card holder parent, a spouse, a son or daughter um, who's 21 and up or a US citizen sibling, um, also through humanitarian means. And the last uh, resort is the diversity lottery, which is like the lottery for the green card. So that in a nutshell, um, is, are some of the ways to get the green card um, or migrate to the United States. Also keep in mind there are temporary visas as well. So um, you, if you really want to explore these options, schedule a consultation. 
Um, my number is 561-405-4889. You can call um, the office. Um, so we do have staff that is available Monday to Friday up to 11 p.m. For those of you who, um, you know, you want to call after work to schedule your consultation, you can do that. VT13, and even then, we have a dedicated staff member, a scheduling coordinator, who will schedule your consultation up until 11 p.m. But keep in mind, if you hop out of your bed at 1 a.m. in the morning and you're like, I really need to get through to the attorney, what will happen is that there, there's an after hours receptionist that will take your name, your information, and then the scheduling coordinator on the next business day will schedule that consultation for you to get in with me. So VT131, I'm deported and my US citizen children are suffering hardship in the US. What can I do? So you, there are certain waivers available and I'm so sorry to hear that your children are suffering hardships. Uh, but it depends on the reason that you were deported. So we, when it comes down to this, we definitely have to sit down to figure out why were you deported? And then based on the underlying issue, we can identify if there's a solution, if there's a waiver for you to come back to the United States. So give me a call, schedule a consultation, and then we can go through that. So asked by Kilea, can you file for a child that doesn't have a passport? So you, what you can start the, um, now keep in mind that they do request um, the passport and they do want to see a passport that is because in order to get the immigrant visa, you're going to have to have a passport. So the first thing that you should do is go ahead and apply for your child's passport because uh, sometimes it is required as evidence in family base, so a part of the required documents. Um, but at some point in the process, you will not be able to get the immigrant visa without having the, uh, the passport. Love Doctor 32, okay. So keep those questions coming. So far, these are all great questions. So um, let's see. Where are you located? So I'm in the physical location is in Boca Raton, Florida. However, keep in mind, I represent clients in all 50 states and globally because we do have to work with USCIS offices all over the country, as well as US embassies all over the country. So we're really not limited by borders or state lines. Uh, and, and if you would like to schedule a consultation, consultations are um, by phone and video for those of you who are out of state and we have a good system in place to work with clients all over the world as well as all over the US. Alive and Bless in reference to Glenn's question, where can uh, one apply for the ITIN number? So if you go to the irs.gov website, you will find um, what, what are called tax assistance agents or tax acceptance agents and they would be able to help you. So you'd have to contact their office. So they usually um, are certified to do this kind of work by the IRS. You'd have to contact them and um, schedule an appointment to go in and they'll tell you what to take with you to the appointment. So Althea, how can I migrate to the US from Guyana? So Althea, that's a very loaded question and it would take me hours to get through that. So if you would really like to schedule a consultation and talk, let, um, go ahead and do that because then we can talk more. We can narrow down um, that question to how you yourself can qualify right now. So I'm sorry to ask too many questions, but can I apply for citizenship after four years and nine months? You can definitely submit the application at four years and nine months. And um, and then at, once you go to the interview, then of course they'll verify that you have reached the five year mark, um, which you know it's very rare that a citizenship application would be under that um, the three months. So I have had I just um, completed one of my clients' cases that there they will be a citizen in two and a half months. Um, so in, in, but in your case, it would have to be 
at the five year mark that you actually get granted um, US citizenship, but by all means, you can definitely submit that application at four years and nine months. Maxine Dixon 87, what if you was filing? So what if you are filing and the person died before the process completed? So if the, if the I-130, for example, if you were being sponsored by a qualifying family member and the I-130 uh, was approved before the person's death, there is something called humanitarian reinstatement where they, would, they could allow you, if approved, to um, have a, a substitute sponsor your um i your affidavit of support and then you would still go through the uh permanent resident process riverdale five west you're welcome so anuncia if you marry a citizen does you working without permit get for bit given so yes i'm glad you asked that question now if you're working without a permit always be honest on the application and yes they don't look at that if you're the U.S. citizen, so the spouse of a U.S. citizen who came into the country with a visa and then you um, you worked without a permit, when you go through the uh, adjustment of status, uh, that will not be held against you. Ralph Hector 97, how to help uncle obtain a visitor visa to come to a wedding? How does that work? So um, your uncle would have to go ahead and apply for a visitor's visa. He, your uncle would have to show that he has strong ties to his home country and that he's likely to return to his country after he attends this wedding. So unfortunately, the, the, the part, the, it's not really going to be up to you necessarily to get your uncle the visitor's visa. Your uncle has to go ahead and apply for it and carry evidence. So show his property, show his home, show his mortgage, show his commitment, show his job, show his business, um, evidence of his business, show his kids, his spouse, if he has those and the fact that they live there and he takes care of his kids. Those are um, some ways to show strong ties to your country. Kelia, so I'm not in Jamaica now, but I can't get to go there yet, um, but I started the process, okay. Um, so Dark Horse 45, it's so nice to see you. Thanks for stopping in and saying hi. Maya Flores 216, what is the process for someone from El Salvador? So um, it will be this, it will usually be the same. So there is no difference um, for anybody from, now if you're referring to the E2 visa i don't believe el salvador is on the list of the e2 countries if that's what you're referring to um and in regards to other processes it's pretty much the same as um as other countries um so lati rain makeup art thanks for sharing the live verns how can i migrate to the usa with my autistic sister we are from the bahamas so in this case, it depends on how you and your sister qualifies to come to the United States. Um, there are so many different avenues, but we'd have to verify whether you qualify. What do you qualify through family and employer based on humanitarian um, needs or uh, whether you can uh, enter the lottery and come, so, uh, come to the US. Anuncia, Anuncia, thank you, you're welcome. Stock 95, thanks for sharing the live. Saki 95, Queen D455, can siblings apply for siblings? US citizen siblings can apply for their siblings. So keep those questions coming because that's why I'm here. I am here to answer your immigration questions. So take advantage of that right now. So uh, let's see. Um, Ali4202, thanks for following. Chris, Krishna, um, hello, how many months currently uh, is t taking perm approval? So it depends on where you are, what country. Um, the, the processing time differs for different countries. It can be as short as six months and it can go on for years. So what you can do is if you go to uscis.gov, you can search if they currently have the petition and they haven't transferred it over to the National Visa Center, then what you can do is look up the form name. So it's usually the I-140 
and then you can see the range of time they're taking to process these types of applications. Ali 4202 got married, then divorced, then remarried four years now and still got denied. So I'm not sure if you remarried the same person or if you um, if you married somebody else. So <clears throat> it may it may very well be the type of evidence that you're showing the officer isn't convinced um, that it's a bona fide marriage. So um, you in this case where you have been denied, I definitely urge you to schedule a consultation. Sounds like if you got married, then divorced, then remarried. Okay, so you did say uh, remarried. I don't know if it's somebody else. But um, if this is the same relationship, obviously, uh, you know, you, you, the two of you are definitely going through a lot. And um, that in itself can be an indication that it's a bona fide marriage. So it really comes down to what's, what is in the application. And to do that, evaluate what the situation is. Give me a call, let's evaluate, and then I can help you um, get through the process. Stocky95, thanks for sharing the information you have been giving us. You're welcome. Ralph Hector 97 So um, Rita David, hi there. Someone else, we have a child now since a year. Okay, so Ali4202, I would like to speak, you know, it's best to speak in a consultation um, because we need to get to the bottom of this. Now, um, if you married, so you got married, then divorced, then remarried, and still got denied, I don't know if this is, if the immigrant is you or your spouse. But sometimes what happens is when you go from one marriage to the next and they both involved permanent residents or green card applications, <clears throat> they, offer, they will require heightened scrutiny, meaning that they will, will need clear and convincing evidence that you not only is your current marriage real, but that your previous marriage was real as well. And so that um, that is one thing that comes to mind, but keep in mind I don't know what the facts are. I don't know what your situation is. And so, um, it, you know, I would have to sit down with you and get details. Um, great. So Krishna, great information. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And thank you for that. That keeps me going. Crystal8022. Hello, I am new. How do I apply to live and work in the US? So that is a very, very loaded um, question just because there are so many avenues. So if you are thinking of a way to come to the United States and you want to confirm that you qualify for it, give me a call. The office from Monday to Friday is open for calls um, through, and the scheduling coordinator can schedule you between 8.30 a.m. right around to 11 p.m. And then there are also after hours receptionist available to take your information so that the scheduling coordinator can get through to you the next day. So um, go ahead, give us a call uh, if you really want to explore your options. Althea, I absolutely do Zoom calls. So um, schedule a consult and let's get to talking. So, and thank you for sharing the live. Um, Mia Flores, so uh, then they would have to return to the country to have the interview when it comes to that part. So um, it depends on how you're doing it. So usually that happens where you don't qualify to apply for the green card in the US. Um, and if that's the case and you've overstayed in the United States or you crossed the border without permission, you would have to apply for a waiver before you leave. You never want to leave the country without knowing that you have an approved waiver. Because if you leave the country, because of that overstay, you would become barred. So you, the, you have, it takes extra steps if you don't qualify to apply for the green card in the US. Lati Rain Make, make Apart. Makeup art. Can my aunt in the U.S. file for me? I'm from Jamaica, but I am in the Cayman now. So aunts can't file for um, nieces or nephews. Cooley Gal 96. How long does it take to become a U.S. citizen after biometrics was done? 
So that is, it, it depends on the service center that's gonna be processing your case. Um, what you can do is if you go to USCIS.gov, go to case processing times, look up the processing time for the service center and the, uh, sorry, the um, form and you'll see the range of time they're taking. Camps Diamond, I called today to ask question and ladies say only way to speak to someone is by appointment. So yes, definitely you have to schedule a consultation. That is how I provide legal advice. So, um, you know, you wouldn't just be able to call and, um, speak to me because I have, um, put, you know, people, clients that are on, uh, you know, work to do as well as consultations where I sit down and really advise, uh, people for up to an hour each. And so that's where you must, um, confirm the appointment with the consultation fee and, um, schedule. Because it, it, uh, you know, I am putting time into advising you and giving you valuable le uh, legal advice too. So, um, Ali, I'm looking forward to seeing you in a consultation. Um, I am Kim 077. What's the investor's visa? So it's the E2 investor's visa. I've been doing uh, videos on it. This is a, a great way to come try out life in the United States. Um, you are able to, if you are the citizen of certain countries, so in this case, Jamaica, Grenada, Trinidad, Panama, Costa Rica, um, are just some of those countries, you can um, start a business in the U.S. or you can expand your current business in the U.S. as long as you can show that you have invested or are currently investing in the business or in a business in the United States. You can show that investment by showing that you're starting the business, that you, for example, leased an office space, um, that you've taken the steps to spend the money um, to run the business. However, you must keep in mind that while substantial investment doesn't mean mil millions of dollars, it means that you have to show that you have enough capital, so enough money that you've invested um, enough money to successfully run the business. So Cherry Blossom 20, I have a question. Can my mom who is not working adopt my cousin's baby who is five years old? Um, so, you know, it's that is a complex question um, because there, there are different rules in place um, for, so it, it is possible there is a possibility i don't know where you are uh, cherry blossom if you're in the united states with your five-year-old then your mom would be able to however as far as not working it depends on on um, what your mom's resources are whether based on um, because you have to go through the legal adoption process in the united states and um that would that you'd have to meet those requirements which i'm not a an adopt adoption a lawyer i'm not a family lawyer so you'd have to find somebody who deals specializes in sh in adoptions to be able to help you with that part but once your mom adopts your child if your child is not doesn't have um permanent you know doesn't have status if your mom what happened to your child, your mom would have to have full custody of your, your five-year-old for two years. Um, and they would, all of this would have to be done, um, before they turned 18 to be able to, um, apply for their, their, uh, permanent residence. So Asha, Asha, I just saw your question. Also, oh, how much months it takes for citizenship? So I'd say the average is about six months. It ranges though uh, from case to case from six to even 12 months. Do you help people in states apart from Florida? So Ali, yes, absolutely, I do. I represent clients all over the country. Um, so uh, if you are anywhere in the country, in anywhere in the world, I can help you. As long as it's a US immigration issue, Dark Horse 45, you did an awesome job. Thank you for that, um, Dark Horse 45. I really appreciate that. Um, so, um, Jip, Jip Cross, Cross Sex, 
uh, forgive me how do i start a business in the u.s from canada so we would it's best for us to talk about what type of business you're trying to start um, because it all depends so there are the uh, general business moves that you have to make like you know um, create an llc or or a, a entity choose an entity um you know your ein uh get an office space get employees so it all depends on what you're trying to do your goals and um whether that can qualify you for an e2 mineka 22 thanks for the follow Cassie 1306, if one had a baby and is unmarried before the petition is processed, does it affect it in any way? So I, um, now yeah, it depends, right? Um, if the baby, if you had the baby, um, how does the baby fit into all the facts involved? So if the baby somehow indicates that if you're applying through a spouse, and the baby isn't the spouses and your relate you, you know your relationship span many years and then all of a sudden you you had a baby that is not your spouse's baby that could possibly indicate to the officer that the marriage is a sham and so it depends on what your facts are if you if it's a parent that applied for you and um you so a parent applied for you and you have to be unmarried to qualify you had a baby you would still qualify actually you would still qualify and you can take your baby along with you so um it all depends on what's going on gabrielle's drip uh, i also have family living in the us um too so if um gabrielle drip they have to be specific um family members and you have to have be a certain age and marital status so um you know, generally speaking, uh, if you have a U.S. citizen or legal permanent resident spouse or parent or a son or daughter who's 21 and up or a U.S. citizen sibling, those could be a possible paths for you to get a permanent residence. I am Kim077. What's the amount that has to be invested? So great question. There is no set amount. Um, I can tell you, that, though, that the type of business, it depends on the type of business. So for example, if the type of your business that you have, if it, it's going, it would thrive or it would, you could successfully start your business and run the business on $100,000, then you would have to show that amount of the investment or at least a majority of that investment um, to be able to get this uh, type of visa. So there's no millions of dollars, no set amount, but usually the safe amount is about a hundred thousand and possibly fifty. I've never seen less than fifty though. Gabriel Drip, I'm interested in that visit investors visa. I'm from Trinidad, so you're Gabriel Drip. If you're interested, give me a call. We're gonna we can talk about it and verify whether you qualify. Get started on that. Um, Chocolate thirty one eighty five. Hi there. Um, Avalon Mondesir, what is the cost of the consultation? So it is $150 for up to an hour. And this is what I can tell you. It is well worth it because for $150, you walk out knowing your steps, the steps that you have to take, confirming whether you're on the right track, getting legal uh, representation. Should we agree and should you want to get legal representation through the process? Um, some of the processes can be complex. And so the first getting the $150 uh, dollar value out of the consultation can take you to the next step and, and basically change your life. I, um, I have sat down with many individuals who have told me, first of all, they're about to make a mistake and the consultation was enough to let them know what they needed to do to avoid the mistake and also that basically let them understand that they needed legal representation. SLJ62, working for nine years, but I'd love to know how to apply for a work permit. So it, you would have to qualify for the work permit. You'd have to qualify through some sort of immigration application, an underlying immigration application. So for example, 
if you're filing for um, you greet the green card through a US citizen um, spouse, uh, then that could be a possible way. Or if you're filing for asylum, that could be another way. But you would have to basically um, qualify in some way. Um, all right, so keep hang tight while I get to your questions. Hi, how do I apply for uh, an American visa? I'm from Trinidad, my husband has his. So uh, Nikki, you'd have to show that you have strong ties to your home country, that you will not, you will return to your home country after you have visited the US temporarily. And what they like to see is proper, the, you know, evidence that you have property, you have a business, you or employment, you and the long-standing employment that you have um, strong family ties to your country, strong commitments that would, um, you know, basically let you come back. Um, so I am Kim zero seven seven. Can appointments be made uh, via email? So there is an email in the contact. If you go to the website, there's an email there. You can um, send an email to info at stlawoffice.com. And it's also on the contact page on the website. Just go to the link in my bio and you can speak to the scheduling coordinator through that um, email. And I'm pretty sure that um, she will, will help you, accommodate you. User 957. Completed biometrics two months back, but status not updated in USCIS case status. So unfortunately, sometimes they don't update it. I know that can be very nagging and you want, you're wondering what's going on. Um, sometimes they can be bad with that. Cam Diamond, does age matter in a relationship when applying for a green card? While it shouldn't, you really do have to show that it's love. As long as you love each other, you entered a genuine marriage, it doesn't have to matter. But you know the officer may ask. The officer may just ask, especially if it's huge. So if, uh, for example, the one spouse is 60 years old and the other is 30 years old, the officer is definitely going to um, pry into that and and. You, you may face further scrutiny. How long does NVC hold your case for? So the NVC is gonna hold your case for, um, it depends on when an immigrant visa will, number will become available. Um, with immediate relatives of US citizens, they don't have to wait for a visa, immigrant visa number. However, every other category does, and some of them are years long, um, so yeah. It depends on how long depends on what category you're applying. So um Gypso G Gyp Crow Sessix. Thank you for the, the rose. Thanks so much. That's so nice of you. How long does it take to file a petition for an unmarried child over twenty one from a US citizen in New York? Now keep in mind that if that um, unmarried child over 21 is in New York and they're out of status, that they must apply for a waiver to be able to return to their country. If they return to their country without the, um, without the waiver, they'll get stuck outside of the United States. They'll be barred. So what you have to do, get legal advice because this is a more complex process. You want to make sure you're doing it right. Um, but generally speaking, it takes about six to seven years right now for a US citizen to sponsor an unmarried child over 21. Completed biometrics two months back, but status not updated in the US. So I did answer that. Nikki 2 Classic, thank you for that. I'm glad that I'm um, informative. That's exactly what I'm here for. And Stocky95, yes, I am Jamaican, where, I, where I, I'm from Jamaica. So I grew up in Mobe, Jamaica. Um, user 957, my priority date, June 2010, EB2 India Employment Based Green Card. Um, it is current, but no response from USCIS. So unfortunately, there is a backlog right now uh, just hang tight check on your case make sure that nothing is pending on your end i'm from jamaica i have two small business but i'm not registered will i be qualified for a visa so we'd have to get more in depth 
um you know you have businesses that's a great start in jamaica and you're jamaican so that could definitely be a good starting point but now we have to evaluate your capital what type of business is it, is it? what are your goals in the united states um and what are your plans for the future for this business in the u.s because that's going to basically set the tone for whether you qualify for that e2 visa jbird 640 hi can i apply for a work permit if i'm already in the states so being in the united states alone is not going to um qualify you you have to have some other immigration um, benefit that allows you to get a work permit um that's pending Cassie 1306, a common law relationship with a child, would that affect my ability to sponsor um, my fiance? So um, you said a common law relationship with a child. So that's, I don't know if you are, now if you're a US citizen, you can apply for your fiance, but if you're in a common law relationship, um, then I'm not sure uh, what that if you know if that's still pending so if that if that you're still in a relationship uh, then it could affect your ability to sponsor a fiance because then you wouldn't you couldn't be in two different relationships um, but please let me know if I'm misunderstanding does age matter in a relationship? So I answer that, Cam Simon. It can definitely. If there's a huge gap, you want to make sure you shore up your evidence. Make sure that you you can um, show the officer that this is a genuine marriage. Completed biometrics two months back, so I answered that. Um, so first question is above. Um, so S L J. Oh my gosh. I have so many questions, SLJ. Can you retype that question? It's hard for me to go back. Camille Bartholom, thanks for sharing. So, um, so Cam Simon, what if the relationship is 10 years? Will age difference pose a matter? So exactly, Cam Simon, um, if you have a 10 year relationship, if you've had a 10 year relationship, then you definitely would want to show that in the evidence show and that could be um strong so that could be strong evidence if you show a timeline of the length of marriage uh, the length of time that you've been together uh in the final interview that could come out as well because that would mean you know each other very well so where, where age can matter um you you know in if you have good history with your spouse you could um you could overcome now if you're really concerned cam diamond get legal advice whenever you are asking these type of questions it's so important to make sure that you get the legal advice to make sure you're going into a situation um that you're not going into a situation blindly and that you understand what you're in store for so you can sufficiently uh prepare for it I'm Jamaican as well as um, C as C1D working for nine years. Would I be able to apply for a work permit? So no, not even having a C1D will allow you to um, get a work permit in the US. You'd have to qualify in some other way. So is Barbados included in E2 countries? So no, Williams, um, it's not included. So great questions. I am going to call it a night. If you request, if I didn't get to your question tonight, um, please go ahead, hang on to your question, follow me. And as soon as I go live, um, then go ahead and um, ask your question. I'm here every day with very few exceptions. So um, I will be back. Uh, just make sure you follow me. So, um, and also, if you'd like to schedule a consultation, go ahead and um, call. There is staff available up to eleven p.m. Monday to Friday to take uh, to schedule you, put you on the schedule, and confirm the appointment with me. Uh, you can also come if you do miss the scheduling uh, coordinator. You can call twenty four seven. You'll get an after hours receptionist who will take your information and then the scheduling coordinator 
we'll get back to you the next business day. So um, go to the website, complete the web form if you really don't want to call, or you can call right now. I don't know if um, it's 11, but you can call right now. You'll either get the scheduling coordinator or an after hours receptionist who will take good care of you and get you on the schedule. Thanks uh, for those of you who have followed me tonight. I'm looking forward to getting your questions again tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.